Okay, so I was uh, making a video here to help show people the basics of Git. Uh, Git is basically a program that keeps track of all the changes you make to files. Okay, so I'd like to uh, show you what's so good about Git. Um, I discovered Git uh, about a year ago now and it's really, really changed my workflow. I'm so much more productive now and I'd like to show you exactly how you know it's achieved this. Um, first of all, it's not just for programmers. I mean, it, it's, it takes a while to learn and uh, the way I use it certainly, uh, I use it at the command line with the actual native tool itself. But different people, um, you know, use different versions. There are different versions available that you can use if you'd like. Uh, there's much easier ones, uh, graphical user interfaces for it. Uh, but I'm a kind of command line hacker type myself, so that's how I'm going to be using it. And uh, it does have, you know, any kind of creative writing application it can be used to help with. Uh, or really, you know, any, anything at all really where you're making changes to files. It can even cope with binary ones, not just uh, text files, but it works best with plain text files. So for instance, we'll make a new directory. Uh, actually, let me get rid of all these other terminals because we only need one. Okay, so I'm in this new directory. Uh, git test. If I look in here, there's no files. I've just made it. Uh, if I do git in it, it's now a git repository. So git's now keeping track of all the files in here, of which there aren't any yet. So let's make one. Okay, so uh, this is just a very basic file. Obviously, you know, the actual project is going to be much more complicated than one file with a few lines of text, but this is just to show you roughly what happens. Uh, first of all, uh, Git is not aware of the uh, file. So if you do a Git status, it's saying that it's untracked, it's not aware of it, it's not paying attention to it. So we're going to add the file to Git so that it knows about it. Uh, now if we do a Git status, it knows that it's a change that it needs to do. Uh, so we commit this. And now I'm going to make things a little bit more advanced and show you uh, some cool things Git can do. Uh, it can do branching where it simultaneously keeps track of several different versions of what's going on. So for instance, I can say uh, we're going to check out a different version of the repository. Uh, which is a new branch that we're going to make. Um, let's just call it anything secondary. Okay, so I've got the exact same file here, uh, but I can uh, change it in a way that um, it's only going to pay attention in this particular branch, this particular version of it. So say I can change this to the fourth line and this to the fifth. And I can also make a new file. So, you know, I've got two files now, I've changed them slightly. Uh, if I do git diff, I can see all the changes I've made since the last commit. And you can see uh, I've taken out some lines and added in some lines. Basically, it's just I've changed them, but as far as it's concerned, I might as well have removed the whole line and added it back in again with the changes. So we're just going to save those changes. It knows I've added the new file and that I've made the changes to the old one. And if I check the log, you can see that I've made this change. And if I look at the files, you can see what's in there. And it's got all the changes I've made. But if I then check out the original branch, we go back to how things were before. The first branch is always called master. And you can see the second files disappeared. And if you have a look at the contents of the first one, you can see it's got it exactly how it was. It doesn't yet say, you know, this is the fourth line, this is the fifth line. So I can make a, a different change to the file here. So I could say, um, you know, spell it slightly differently. Make the change. And now if I look at the log for this, it's remembered this change, but not the other one because it's on a different branch. Uh, if I look at the branch, you can see I can change back and forth between them as I like, so I can check out the other one. Uh, 
and the files how it is in the second branch I can go back to the first one and it's got the changes I made in that one so it we're basically gets keeping track of two different versions of the same file system now the same file structure uh, so in this project okay we've got two different versions of it well, now I want to merge them back in so you know, we're taking the best out of both worlds so I'm just going to tell it to merge uh, the branch secondary and it's done so if you look at the file now it's got the change that I made in this branch and it's got the changes I made in the other branch all in the same file now without me having to do it by hand it's all completely automated and it's also got the second file which was made in the uh, other branch that uh, didn't exist here at all so there was no kind of conflict there uh, sometimes you can be working on the exact same line and the two different versions in which case it will get a bit confused and it will say look I don't know which version of this line is authoritative you're going to have to do it for me and tell me you know which uh, versions best or, or mix and match them uh, but if you're working on two different parts of the same file uh, you can do that as much as you like and it's completely automated to sync them back up again now this is fairly good in terms of um, you know working by yourself okay maybe you can't think of a, a reason you'd want to uh, have different branches but just by yourself keeping track of all the different uh, steps you've done and having it tell you exactly when you did everything and what changes you made is really helpful but when it really comes into its own element is when you're working with other people Say you've got a project and you're working with someone on the other side of the planet and you've both got internet access but you're in different time zones, you don't really talk to each other that much. You can make changes on your version of uh, the repository as it's called or, or the, you know, the, the version of your project that it's keeping track of uh, and then the other person can keep track of their version at the same time and occasionally, like say every day or so, uh, you can just pull in the latest changes from each other and it's the exact same thing as merging so it takes all the changes you've made and incorporates into that all the changes that the other person's made um, I've been doing this with my girlfriend with uh, my day job a few months ago I was working on a website and uh, she got contracted in to work on it as well and it just the process went so smoothly um, basically I was making some changes fixing bugs on some of my own branches uh, Nina made a copy of the master branch and then made her own branch on her local copy from that uh, she made her changes I just made my changes and then when she'd finished she just asked me to pull in her changes which I did uh, into a new branch so I could you know check them make sure they're okay and then I just merged them into the master branch here uh, push them to the server and the website was live with the changes that she'd made and even if you've been on the other side of the planet it would have been that easy to do because it works over the internet this way and even just if you're using it as a, a substitute for FTP alone it's worth it uh, in terms of if you make a website and you find yourself spending a lot of time uh, keeping track of which changes you made when and you know with this particular bug release I need to update these particular files and then I need to uh, copy them across to the server with FTP uh, you shouldn't really be doing it that way anymore in this day and age Git will automate all of that for you so you no longer have to keep track of it you know a computer can keep track of it for you so it really should I mean you should keep track of uh, actually improving the code but you don't need to keep track anymore of say putting in comments to say oh I did this on such and such a date as part of this release if you want to know when a change was made and who by uh, you just use git blame so for instance git blame test.txt it's telling me uh, who made uh, each line of code here obviously this was all me because I'm the only person using it in this example and it's telling you which commit they made the change in so if you want to you know see what else what other changes were made at the same time that can be quite useful um, I know the other week there was a, a, a bug in a, a program I was working on and I had a look at the line of code in question it's, about, it's a block of code about five lines long and I checked it using git blame and every single line of code was written on a different date I was thinking okay I'm starting to see why this was buggy to begin with so I rewrote the whole thing uh, it's also very nice for you know if um, there's something's a line of code in there that shouldn't be and you can't remember putting the line of code in but you're not sure if one of your co-workers did and which one or why uh, again you can use git blame you can find out who did it you can find out when they did it 
and you can find out uh, exactly which commit it was a part of so you can find out what other things they're doing at the same time so if they had a reason to change it uh, you can kind of change it back in such a way that won't break the other things they were doing at the same time rather than just changing it back to what you had before and then their stuff breaks and, and there's a kind of tug of war back and forth basically uh, the way it works it it's just made it so much easier to do things because you don't need to keep track of everything yourself anymore. The computer does it for you. You just do the work and the computer will keep track of who did what, when they did it, and they'll make it so easy for you to uh, pull in changes from other people and push them to other people. It's something that really at the moment only programmers use, but I really think that say um you know a hollywood script writers uh, you know making tv shows if they've got a team of people making a script which is essentially a plain text file if they use something like this they'd probably be a lot more efficient at it and save a lot of time that they could use to you know come up with more ideas of dialogue and things um, there's really no reason why it's only programmers using this if you write novels it's useful for that um, i myself have been using this for novel writing uh, which i can show you Okay, so this is a program I use called Gitx, which is a uh, graphical user interface for Git, basically, uh, made by some other people unrelated to Git, as far as I know, who just decided to make a nice interface for it. Uh, this is for OS X. I think it hasn't been updated in a while, though, so there's probably more recent ones, but this is what I'm comfortable with. Um, I never really use this to actually you know, do the changes and commit them or anything, just to have a broad overview of, of changes I've made. But this is a novel I'm working on. You can see... Uh, all the different changes I've made to it, um, even occasionally using different branches by the looks of things, but I think in this case that was just my laptop. Um, one of the things I like to do is, you know, I write novels and short stories, and I have a laptop, and quite often I'll, you know, make some changes to the novel on my desktop, and then I make some changes to it on my laptop and in between I might forget to copy the files across so they're all up to date and then I have you know some changes in the desktop and some in the laptop and it's really difficult to uh, you know work out you know how to combine them together and, and get the original you know, get the original back you know uh, to combine all the updates on my desktop with all the updates on my laptop and again you're just using git merge and git pull i can pull in all the changes from my laptop to my desktop and vice versa it takes literally one or two seconds because it's a local connection um it's very very efficient and it just makes me much more productive because instead of actually having to you know keep track of all the changes i've made i just do the work and the computer will keep track of it for me uh, you know here's a change i've made i've uh, Find a better example. So here I uh, just changed a single line in uh, my notes, not even the main novel itself, but just you know the notes I keep about what I'm going to do. I just you know made a quick change to that, and then I saved it. And that means when I next go onto my laptop and do an update, I'm pulling the changes from this. I'll include that update and I have all my notes with me wherever I am. Uh, someone gave me a critique, which was very nice of them. So uh, we now know, you know the name of the person who did that critique. Uh, yeah, I've included them in the uh, thank yous now. Uh, so it's made a note that in scene one, there's a change to that line. And here's the whole critique they gave me, which I've now... Uh, put in with the files with my notes and as I make the changes I'm going to you know, delete them from the notes as I actually insert the uh, prose and dialogue and everything and it, it's just so much easier this way I don't need to worry about keeping track of everything every single change I've made to my novel ever is stored in this one directory And here's the uh, same information in the command line. You can see it's the exact same uh, you know, titles that I've got elsewhere. These are just the commits I've done. Basically, um, you know, I do various changes uh, on my desktop. 
I do various changes on my laptop and then I just pull them in from the laptop to the desktop and, and from the other point of view I pull them in from the desktop to the laptop and they're always up to date with each other so you know if I'm going on holiday and I want to do some work on it there uh, I just you know put in the changes and go and when I come back I get back uh, onto my desk pull in the changes and everything's back to normal and, uh, and everything's up to date it is just such a time saver it's amazing so yeah, I really strongly recommend anyone use that. I use it for music as well. Uh, let me show you that. So uh, here's an album I made, Music from Mars. Uh, even though these are reason and record files, the binary files, so Git can't really tell you, you know, you've added this line, you've removed this line, so it doesn't really have lines, it's just a big glob of data. Uh, but even then, even if you know, you're, say you're a photographer and you're keeping track of all of your photos and the changes you make to them, say you're not yet doing non-destructive editing, this is basically the same kind of thing. It keeps a track of all the changes. It will just keep a track of every single version of the file. So you never need to worry about, oh, maybe I made a mistake and I should get it back to how it was three days ago. You just do get log, find out the, uh, the special number of the commit and you can check out a file that was, uh, you know, the three days old version. Uh, then you can, you know, rename it, use it as something else and we combine it into your current version. It's just so much easier this way. So for instance, I added a viola to uh, one of the tracks, Puddle Jumping, and it doesn't know what changes I've made. It just knows, you know, the binary files are different, so I need to update this. Um, then I did some violins afterwards and saved another version, and it made a note of that one. Uh, basically, you know, if I ever decided, hey, it was a mistake to add all of these uh, strings in, uh, I want to get back the previous version, i just find the version number of the, the version before that, which would be this one, and I copy and paste it, and I say, git checkout, that number, the file I want, and then I'm back to the old version, I can make changes to that, save it as something else, and then commit it, and now I've got two copies of the file, uh, you know, one which was based on one that I had uh, lost a long time ago. Basically, you're not losing any change you make ever again. If you're kind of a, a bit, um, you know, almost obsessive compulsive over it, uh, and you really, you're fastidious with backups, and you really like to have a copy of every single change you made ever, which is what I always do. I like to have, you know, every single, you know, change I've ever made to any novel or any song or anything. Um, it makes it really easy to do that. You do not need to do it by yourself anymore. It just does everything for you. And it is just such a time saver. I really cannot stress enough how much of a time saver it is. Uh, all in all, I love Git. Uh, my girlfriend loves Git. We're trying to get everyone we know using Git. If, if you do any kind of creative writing, be it programming, uh, prose, you know, fiction, essays, or even binary files, like if you're a photographer, or if you make music, it can really help you keep track of all the changes you make to them. And especially if you collaborate with other people, and really especially if you collaborate with other people over the internet, it just makes it so much easier to keep track of all the changes everyone's done. You know, anyone who does kind of creative work like this, they, they really need to learn Git. It will save them so much time. There's also a Linus Torvalds Google Tech Talk, which I would really recommend, in which uh, he insults members of the audience by calling them stupid and ugly, and uh, really insults people who use a uh, rival program, which isn't decentralized. Uh, decentralization is at the heart of the hacker ethos. Uh, you know, as a kind of group of people, hackers generally tend to be very much against authority and you know you have to do this because we say so the much more well you do it this way and I'll do it this way and we're all just as good and we're going to share what we've done and we can all improve on each other's best parts and kind of evolve the ideas that way gets very much in that style you know if you want to make a, an improvement to a piece of software download the resource so download the source code in git uh, make your changes uh, contact the people who make it and say hey do you want to pull the changes for me and check them out and see if you want to maybe merge them into your master branch and if they like them they'll do that and that's how quite a few projects now work and there's really you know no reason why you know say someone writing fan fiction with their friends couldn't do it this way uh, it's a much easier much more pleasant way of collaborating with people creatively so yeah i, I really recommend it <laughs> love the git